Welcome to part two of sex and consent. In the last episode, I basically left you guys with a consent is void if it is obtained by means of deceit or duress. You can revert back to the first episode just to understand exactly what that means. <laughs> Today we're jumping onto authority. Hmm. Authority. Yes. So can you really give, can one give consent to someone that is an authority? Okay, so um, let me start with the statues. Now, Kurt, I mean, you, just, just to say, I mean, reiterate again, um, we're looking at the Acts of Ghana, the criminal code, okay? Mm -hmm. And we're specifically looking at section 14, provisions relating to consent. Now, Kuda, you have studied law, you have a degree in law, I've done paralegal studies, mm -hmm. but if you actually do research on Google, you will find our acts. Yes, you will. If you ask a lawyer who you know, a judge who you you will find the acts. Get acquainted with the law. So now, talking about authority, I'll go straight to the statutes. A consent is void if it is obtained by the undue exercise of any official, mm -hmm. parental, or any other authority and any such authority which is exercised otherwise than in the good faith for the purposes for which it is allowed by law mm -hmm. and then shall be deemed to be unduly exercised. So what does that mean in English? <laughs> Essentially what we're saying is anybody who is in an official position of authority, mm -hmm. so your boss, um, your, your, your lecturer, I any mean, your pastor. Yes. Anybody who is in an official position mm -hmm. and has some kind of authority in a space that you find yourself at any given yes. time. Your parents, okay? Um, and then any other person who has authority, okay? And when These we say people, parents, yes. we, we don't mean your biological parents. Not necessarily. A parent could be a grandmother, a parent yes. could be an aunt, a parent could be an uncle. Anyone that you respect enough and look up to as a parent. It could even just be your neighbor who has taken on a guardian role. Mm -hmm is taking care of your school fees, that sort of thing, okay? So anybody who is in some position of authority. Now, why is it important to talk about authority in the first place? A lot of the time, could I, we all have parents. Yes, we do. We are not have grown up, so not, I mean, everybody is lucky to grow up with their parents. But most of us had somebody who is an authority figure, somebody who we respect, mm -hmm. you know? It could even be the person you see on TV, it could be us, hey, you know? I mean, <laughs> you know, but, uh, somebody who you just revere and respect so much that you would do almost anything the person asks you to do, okay? That's one side of the story. Then there's also the other side where, especially when we're talking about people who hold official positions. Mm -hmm. So this person has so much power in society, he or she can make or break you. Mm -hmm. So if it's a boss at work, you know that if I don't do what this man wants, positive, negative, legal or illegal. Mm -hmm. He might write me off, and if I'm applying for another job, I still have to write back to him to give me a recommendation. Mm -hmm. And he can decide to say, tell the, my new employer to be that, oh no, this chick, she's lazy. Oh, she's, she's not going to get her job done. She steals, she does whatever. And that is a lot of authority speaking. So that's how serious it is. Now, last week you gave a scenario, you said, so a young lady essentially looking for a job and or you know has a boss is moving from maybe national service into full-time mm -hmm. status or is getting some kind of a promotion and the boss says to her you know what if you don't give me some good good okay, it nice. ends here mm -hmm. and I will make sure that if you're applying for a job anywhere else you you're not it. going to get because I won't write the recommendation and they'll come and ask me so that is a clear situation where you are not necessarily giving your consent because you don't want to sleep with the person. You don't want the person to touch you in a way that you're not comfortable with, in a way that is sexual. But in that moment, because you need that job, you need to make money, to eat, to live, to take care of you know, your, your dependents if you have a few, you know, take care of a sick mother, a sick father. In that moment, in that very moment, you find yourself just going along with what the person wants you to do. Not because deep down you want to do it. No. Your, your feelings about what he or she's asking you to do haven't changed, but you are under duress. Mm -hmm. You're being pressured in that very moment. You see why you're pressured, you don't think straight. Don't. I mean, let's all be honest. I mean, I'm listeners I, I, or, no, or viewers. I want you to comment. Let us know, have you ever been in a situation, it might not be a sexual harassment scenario, but in a situation where you find yourself doing something because you're under pressure to do it. 
It's not because you want to do it. Right. But you, I mean, it can even be a simple scenario if your mother wants you to cook. And Charlie, if you don't cook the food, you're not in some trouble for you. Maybe you get some lashes <laughs> or something, you know. Mm -hmm. But you feel pressured and you have to do something that you don't want to do. It's the same situation. Right. You're, you're avoiding to say no because you don't want to get, get whatever's coming at you. Exactly. You can't deal with you the can consequences. Get a beating, you can get. I don't know, whatever You just can't see yourself dealing with the consequences. Second image international admissions in progress. Courses available include hairdressing, beauty therapy and fashion. Call us 1023-331-999. Evening and weekend classes are also available. Okay, and so this is, I mean, in a situation like this, we we're talking about what we call power dynamics, mm -hmm. where you are the subordinate or you are the weaker or more vulnerable entity in the situation, okay? And then there's the person who is the more powerful, the superior, the dominant entity in the situation. And because you are at a disadvantage, you find yourself doing things that you don't want to do, you are coerced into doing things, mm -hmm. just to make sure that this powerful foot doesn't step on you Absolutely. and squash you. It's as simple as that. And the law makes it very clear. It says consent is where that means there's no conversation about consent right, whatsoever. You can't argue that someone no, gave consent. There's yeah. no conversation about consent where an official, mm -hmm. so somebody at work once again, um, somebody who is a parent or in some kind of parental role, your guardian, your grandmother, your grandfather, like you said, an uncle, an auntie, a neighbor who has been taking care of you, any other authority, it could be the mayor mm -hmm. in your town. Okay, please, I'm not talking about any mess, I, believe. I didn't say anything. It could be the mayor, it could be an MP, it could be a minister. It could even be the president of a country. Mm -hmm. It could be a diplomat who you met, the MD of some big company. So all these people have some kind of authority over you, either in your home, in your life, or just in your society, in your community. Mm -hmm. And because you need something from them, and they know you need it from them, they take advantage of their position of power over you. Once you find yourself doing something that they want you to do that you don't want to do, mm -hmm. you are not explicitly giving them permission to do by saying, yes, let's do it. Mm -hmm. I want this. Let's. Once that is not the situation, consent is not even a conversation. And speaking to these people in power, you need to be very ashamed of yourself. Be it a boss, be it a parent, be it and parents, aunties, uncles, grandfathers, whatever the case is. If you're forcing somebody to do something, just because you're in a position of power, just because you can ruin that person's life, just because you won't give them pocket money for school tomorrow, you won't let them buy whatever it is they want to buy. I think you need to be very ashamed of you. You need to stop and take a really good look at yourself. And I know some of you are going to be watching our video right now and watch the first part and sort of saying, yes, why do people do these things? They shouldn't do these things and it's not nice, but you do it. So we know some of you personally. We know some of you. We've seen you do it. We've heard stories about what you do. We just haven't called you out and we're not going to do that. But you need to stop and take a real good look at yourself and what you're doing to generations to come. Because you're setting a trend. This is never going to stop. Exactly. And it's not fair. It's, it's unfair. It's not. Very unfair. And could I, let me just add that there's another clause I, I want us to. So this is the third and final clause that we're using for our argument. You know, we are in court, you know? <laughs> Courts of public opinion. Absolutely. So, clause F. It, it, the, the law, you see, lawmakers, they are not stupid. Mm -hmm. So they spoke about duress, deceit and duress, mm -hmm. left it there. They spoke about people who have authority over other people, more vulnerable people, left it there. Now clause F, it says, a consent shall be deemed to have been obtained by means of deceit or of duress or of the undue exercise of authority or to have been given by reason of a mistake of fact if it would have been refused but for such deceit, mm -hmm. duress, exercise of authority and mistake as the case may be very clear very so very clear. we're saying that what the law is essentially is saying that you can't say somebody has given his or her consent mm -hmm. for be it a sexual act or anything that somebody doesn't want to do mm -hmm. had it not been for the fact that there was some kind of pressure they were deceived in some way they felt like they had to respect this authority figure if not for that pressure that was coming from these spaces they wouldn't have done it. The and law I is love very that clear. The law that they added, or mistake. Yes. 
even if it is a mistake on your part, that person cannot give consent for a mistake. So let's stop arguing, for want of a better word, stupidly. Because we did have this long conversation on Facebook. Yes, and you had some people saying, eh, me, because consent means this to me, therefore you don't have an argument, therefore the law doesn't mean anything. At the end of the day, you try it and let somebody go and report you and see if the law is not working. See if the law will care about your definition. We need to be educated. We need to understand the implications of some of the things that we do and make conscious decisions before we put people in certain positions that we wouldn't want to be in, exactly. that we wouldn't want our daughters to be in, our sisters to be in, our cousins to be in. We need to wake up. Very important. And let me say as well, I mean, before we end this conversation for, you know, that we've been having over these past two weeks, that yes, the law does protect you mm -hmm. if for some reason you find yourself in a mental state and there's such a situation where you can't say no, you end up sleeping with somebody who you wouldn't have slept with, but for the situation or letting the person touch you in a way that you're not comfortable with. And if you're not comfortable, you know there are those situations, somebody touches you and then you go home and you, you, you're trying to scrub your skin off. Mm -hmm. What I want to say is yes, there are those situations where you're not in control of mm -hmm. what you do, but women, let's be wise. Mm -hmm. And so the men too find themselves in these situations, let's be wise. At the end of the day, the law is backing you, but at the same time, sometimes try to think through the things that you're going through. Mm -hmm. While we know people who have had, found themselves in situations like this, we also know people who have equally, you know, risen above it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes too, you need to be able to rise above the situation. Know that there are people like us who know what it means. And if you send us Facebook messages, you comment, you let us know you're going through something, we will advocate for Absolutely. you. Absolutely, we'll do whatever it is that we have to do. And with that, guys, this is the end of part two, end of this topic, sex and consent. I hope you've learned a thing too. My two cents, and I'm speaking to these bosses in all these different companies, these parents, anybody in authority. Think about the things that you do before you do them. Don't put somebody else's child in the position that you wouldn't put your child. If you found out your friend or someone from down the road was sleeping with your daughter or positioning your daughter for sex, how would you feel? Or your son? It happens to men too. I think we need to think about all the things we do before we do them. Don't just act out. Don't have verbal acting. I know it's verbal diarrhea, but don't have verbal acting. Just act any kind of way. Think about it clearly and concisely. And to those young people, you can message us, like Apioka said. Message us. We'll do whatever it is we have to do. If we can actually help you to get a job or we can recommend someone to you or whatever the case is, we'll do whatever it is we have to do. But we all have to stand up and advocate for these people. This needs to stop. You can make it on your own. Okay? Let's close our legs. You, you stop asking. All right? We'll see you guys next week.